Hey, <clears throat> finally. Uh, sorry, the internet's a bit slow down here in New Zealand because we're so far away from everywhere. But um, hey, um, so my name's Simon Pierce, and I am a principal scientist at the Marine Megafauna Foundation. Um, so for this Earth Live lesson, uh, I'm going to be talking about whale sharks. And um, first of all, I'll just show you what a whale shark looks like for those of you who haven't had the pleasure. So there we go. So I took this picture in the Galapagos of, a, of my friend Vico with a really big one. Um, and yeah, just to introduce myself. Um, so I've been working on whale sharks since 2005 now, um, which makes me feel really old, but doesn't seem like very long. Um, I first started working on them in Mozambique in Southern Africa, and I was working there for a few years. And then um, not many people were working on whale sharks at, at that stage. And then people started asking me to help them in other parts of the world, including um, I see one of you watched uh, Sally's uh, talk about uh, whale sharks the other day. So um, the Philippines is one of the places I work and I've worked with Sally uh, several years. Um, so yeah, over the last few years, we've been lucky enough to work on them all over the world. And my main interest is in the conservation of whale sharks. Uh, so my job is to uh, find out where they live and then how many of them are in those places and whether the population's going up and down, or up or down, I should say, uh, and also um, how we can help protect them in those places. And it's really nice with whale sharks. Uh, a lot of people love swimming with them, including myself, because they're super fun and they're, they're really friendly a lot of the time as well. Um, and that, uh, so so people often ask me to help them set up uh, ecotourism industries in the place they're found uh, so that local communities can kind of benefit from their presence. And sometimes that can help um, also fund conservation efforts in those places too. Um, so that, that's, yeah, that's kind of my job and that's what I want to talk about today. Um, I'm super lucky and I absolutely love it. So um, I thought today I'll just introduce uh, whale sharks for those of you who haven't met them before. Um, and they're a pretty amazing fish. So I thought I'd work through some of the most amazing or well, my favorite facts about them. Um, so first up, uh, whale sharks are the largest fish. I'm just going to find a nice Big photo of them, little photo of them looking big anyway. Uh, so you can see here, <clears throat> this one, right, by a swimmer over in Mexico. So you can see they've got a gigantic mouth, um, but you might be able to see, can't really see any sharp teeth in there. Um, so that's fun. Makes it nice for them, to, nice to swim with them. Um, but yeah, the largest whale shark, uh, was caught in a fishery, sadly, over in Taiwan uh, back in the early 1990s, and that was 20 meters long. And another whale shark that was caught over there around the same time was 42 tons. So um, the largest whale sharks get both uh, quite a bit longer and over twice as heavy as the, as the average school bus. So they're absolutely gigantic fish. Um, they are actually the, the largest cold-blooded animal, and at the moment we think they're the biggest fish that's ever lived, um, even larger than like Megalodon and things, the giant extinct sort of white or mako shark that used to go around eating whales. So yeah, they're pretty amazing. Um, so unlike them, um, the, the Megalodon uh, that went around eating whales, um, whale sharks are massive, uh, but they eat some of the smallest animals in the ocean, and they're really food motivated because uh, when they're swimming around, they need to be able to eat a lot of those um, little animals to sustain them. So I think of them as being like ocean Labradors, like they're big, they're friendly, and they're very, very into their food. Um, so some of the best places to see whale sharks are places where there is a lot of food. Um, so, so I got these photos uh, just at the end of last year, um, Mafia Island in Tanzania, and maybe you can see, you see how it looks a bit misty? That's actually loads and loads and loads of shrimp. Um, they love eating shrimp, um, and they eat massive quantities of them as well. So some of the places where they come together to come to feed, um, they're eating over 140 kilos of things like fish eggs and stuff every day, 
So uh, that's um, I worked it out. It's forty three thousand calories. Forty three. Sorry, yeah, which didn't mean much to me, uh, but I worked it out in chocolate, and it's about eight kilograms of dairy milk chocolate. So um, yum, and and that probably keeps them going for quite a while as well, because these cold blooded animals uh, they don't have as fast a metabolism. Um, so they they don't need to heat their bodies up like whales. Like whales have got the same body temperature as as us, more or less, uh, about 37 degrees. Uh, whereas whale sharks, their body temperature is regulated by the surrounding water. So they don't need to uh, they don't need quite as much energy. But if they can get a feast like that and and eat for a few weeks, then that'll probably last them for months uh, before they need to eat much again. So they're super into it. Um, and average uh, whale shark um, can filter about 600,000 litres of seawater an hour uh, when they're feeding like that, um, which is probably why they've got such enormous uh, heads, um, just so they can get like the maximum amount of water through. And they've got huge gills on the side of their heads as well. I'll see if I've got a... Oh, here's a big photo of... The last thing a plankton will ever see. So that's straight down the straight down the mouth of a whale shark, um, and you can see even though it looks dark, it's not actually like a big throat. Um, that's actually the gills. So that's where the water goes, and they filter out the food uh, through the gills. And their actual throat is only about the same size as a like a, a softball or a tennis ball. Um, so only. Like I said, they only eat small stuff. Um, so anything smaller than about 10 centimeters or so, like uh, little plankton, fish eggs, even little fish sometimes um, are fair game for them. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, because I guess based on the timing, a few of you are going to be um, uh, from the UK, hopefully, um, some of the ones, some of you that are tuned in live. Um, so just for you, I worked out that 600,000 litres of seawater that they filter each hour. Um, if you think of that as 600,000 bottles of milk, um, that could make 40 million cups of tea, just to put it in perspective for you. And I worked out that would last the average British household um, about a week, which is really quite amazing. Um, so, yeah, um, also whale sharks, they're amazing swimmers. Um, they're found right around the world, uh, everywhere from like northern New Zealand, where I'm from, uh, right up to even southern Canada and um, Portugal. So they like to be in water above about 21 degrees, uh, which is fair enough, because um, so do I. Um, and they can swim tens of thousands of kilometres every year, uh, but they really do often come back to those places where there's a lot of food for them. Um, but it's been really interesting for us and some of the places we work where we don't see them feeding, uh, like at the Galapagos Islands, I'll just see if I've got a photo. Um, there's, so there's some really big ones, some really big sharks swimming past the Galapagos. And here is a photo of my friend Jonathan uh, putting a little tag on the fin of the whale shark, really big one. Um, and that's how we know. They swim tens of thousands of kilometres a year um, because we've been able to follow them via satellite and actually see where they go. But it's it's really interesting over there because they don't stay um, in the Galapagos Islands, like where we see them. Uh, they tend to just like, sometimes they're there for a day, sometimes just a few hours, and then they swim away. And we actually think over there um, they are detecting the Earth's magnetic field, and they can use that like we use a GPS. Uh, to be able to see exactly where they are. So there's all these volcanoes and stuff in the ocean, and um, we call them sea mounts or sometimes volcanic islands, um, like over in the Galapagos, which is all volcanic islands. And um, they've got, uh, for animals that can detect the Earth's magnetism, um, that allows them to know exactly where they are. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I, I can see I'm getting a few questions here as well, so I'm going to start answering some of those. So if you've got any more, um, just keep adding them, and I'll try and get to as many as I can. Um, how are we going for time? Yeah, cool. Still got a few minutes. 
So first of all, um, Sarah was asking early, earlier about for people that want to get into marine biology, uh, whether I have any tips for them. And I, I for sure do. So um, one thing I'd say, like, first of all, it's good to figure out whether you, like, want to be an actual marine biologist, as in, like, a, a scientist, or you want to work in a field with those animals. So one of the one of the really good ways to figure that out pretty quickly um, is to try and volunteer um, with uh, sometimes like uh, postgraduate students at universities are a really good option if there's a university in your neighbourhood, and otherwise there might be some really good um, some local groups like things like the Marine Conservation Society in the UK. Uh, uh, for those of you who saw uh, Sally's talk. Um, about whale sharks. I've got an awesome volunteer program in the Philippines once once we can travel again. Um, so it's good to do something like that and just see if it's like what aspects are really fun for you, what you really enjoy and what you'd really like to get your teeth into. Um, so that's the, that's the number one tip for me is just for, try and actually go and test it out and get some a bit of experience and that's really helpful for figuring out what you want to do going forward. And you're also, of course, building some contacts and, and you can get some advice on that from those people too. Um, Tom was asking how hopeful I am for the future of sharks. And um, I'd say pretty helpful, pretty hopeful. Um, like I, I work in conservation and um, you kind of have to be an optimist really <laughs> to make that work. Uh, but I definitely am optimistic. There's, there's a lot of their populations are at a really low level. Um, such as for whale sharks, we, we analysed everything we could find about whale sharks a, a few years ago now, and we found that about half of their population has been killed by people um, over the time that I've been alive, uh, like since the early 1990s, 1980s, sorry, I'm old. Um, but, uh, but the thing is now, like, like we do that work and it's kind of depressing to get that answer, but now we know what's going on and we can start helping them to recover. And like once you actually document that, document that with science, like we were able to get um, whale sharks listed on the Convention of Migratory Species by the United Nations and things, and more and more countries are starting to protect them. And also with the work we're doing to help uh, develop ecotourism, uh, like there's lots and lots of people whose livelihood depends on healthy whale shark populations now. Um, which is an amazing way to get lots of people invested in their recovery. And like, I'd also encourage everyone that's watching this to go and swim with them as well um, and, and some of the places where it's done well um, because it's, I, it's really contributing to their conservation. Um, and on that, I, I had another question about some of the places I would recommend to swim with whale sharks. Um, so one of my favourite if, if you're in the UK, uh, one of my favourite places is uh, Mafia Island in Tanzania, and I see a couple of comments from people that have been there before, so that's awesome. Uh, I love that place. So, like, kind of November, December, uh, there's loads of whale sharks feeding. Uh, that's where I was showing some of the pictures before. Um, and it's it's all kind of locally run. Like, there's not too much going on on Mafia Island. It's, it's just a bit south of Zanzibar, which is really busy, uh, but... Um, but mafia is a bit slower and and like whale shark tourism is really really important for them and i just love it there um if you are in north america uh one of the closest places to you is mexico and that's one of the places where you can see hundreds of whale sharks um so that's awesome uh so around june through august you can get uh, really big numbers a bit north of Cancun off the coast there. And my friend Raphael uh, runs tours out there. And and actually, that's part of how we fundraise for our organisation is like helping to host uh, tours um, in those places. So I'll, I'll make a note and I'll, I'll actually like add some, some links to the stuff that we're going to be doing probably next year now. Um, okay, one sec, just so I remember. Uh, I'm for time. Okay, still got a few minutes. So just going to check in. Yeah, so is it safe for kids to swim with whale sharks? Absolutely. Like they are they're completely harmless to people. They're often quite friendly, but most of the time, especially when they're feeding, they're just kind of oblivious. Uh, again, quite like Labradors. Um, 
So anyone that can, like, is comfortable in the water, even if you have to have a life jacket on and something, can just float around, you can get in with a whale shark, you can see them, you can swim with them, you'll have an amazing time. So, yeah, I'd definitely, um, definitely um, in encourage you to do that. Um, what else is there? So if a whale shark is fed well, would it ignore further food if it came across it? Uh, that's an excellent question, and yes, we think so. Um, even there's a few whale sharks in captivity over in Okinawa and uh, in Japan, and they seem to sometimes purposely um, go into starvation for a little while on that. So it seems like like eating a lot and then not eating for a while is probably part of their natural sort of ecology, like which makes sense in the environment they live in, like. There's some places, like I mentioned, like Mafia or Mexico, where there's lots of foods at certain times of the year, and then they probably have a few months where it's quite tough to find food in, in big quantities anyway. Um, so they're probably quite used to eating a lot and then like putting that away as energy and then not eating very much afterwards. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, do, they, do we know if they communicate? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So we don't... As far as we know, they don't make any noises. Um, and no shark shenay is really known to produce sounds in the same way that some fish do, and obviously, like true whales do. Um, but uh, they certainly use body postures. Um, and, and you'll see them sometimes when, when they're together, they'll do like crazy, like for a whale shark, and they'll do like a lean at each other and stuff like that and kind of be following each other around and things. So they might also use some chemical communication uh, through pheromones uh, produced by the females and things like maybe when they're ready to breed so that the males can find them in that big um, blue open ocean, like especially when there's not too many whale sharks left, that's, that's probably really useful for them. Um, uh, oh, hey, Nuno. Yeah, there's um yeah so yeah there's a few in captivity in Georgia Aquarium as well, and actually El Dove, who's in charge of the uh, research and conservation um, projects based out of Georgia, um, him and I are writing a textbook to, or editing a textbook together at the moment. So um, hopefully that'll be finished around August. Um, how am I for time? Okay, so uh, so I'm I'm actually at my time limit, so I'm just gonna. Uh, Lizzie just suggested I finish off just by um, talking about like why is science important to me, um, and the the reason why I love my job is just like, I mean I love being in the field, um, playing with the whale sharks is like totally awesome, um, and just figuring out what's going on because you know we have to use all these um, different techniques to to try and. Um, like follow them around via satellite. We're using ultrasounds now to be able to uh, try and monitor their reproduction. Uh, we're using like biochemistry to try and figure out where they've been eating and things. It's it's just really interesting uh, for me, like on a like an intellectual level as well. But also like I love whale sharks, and for those of you who are lucky enough to have swum with them, uh, I'm sure you'll love them too. And so it's really nice to know that work the work we're doing. Is, is contributing to their conservation as well and helping the species to recover. Um, so there's there's plenty of work to be done with sharks. Um, as several of you have pointed out, like even with whale sharks that are one of the better studied sharks now, uh, we still, there's loads we don't know about them. Uh, we don't know where the babies are. We don't know where most of the females live. Um, so that's like more than half the population. Uh, we hardly see the animals um, except in a few places like um, like, like the Azores and St. Helena and some of the mid-Atlantic um, islands and, and, and places like the Galapagos and offshore Mexico and stuff. So like e even for this huge fish, we still know very little about them. Um, so yeah, definitely encourage you, those of you who are interested in marine biology and marine conservation and just learning more and stuff like it's It's an amazing field to get to. Um, and yeah, so I'll... I'll I'll finish off there, unfortunately, um, <laughs> just to stay on time. Uh, but I'm going to go through the comments after this and I'll try um, the, the questions and I'll try and answer those in the comments as well. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, remember, like, subscribe to this to Lizzie's channel here because there's some um, 
there's going to be lots more live lessons coming up and there's been some awesome ones as well there's um so my friend sally as i said earlier she's done one on whale sharks in the philippines um there's been one on basking sharks i saw before and my friend ben porter did one yesterday on seabirds as well that's very cool so there's loads and loads of material here um so thanks so much to lizzie for organizing that and thank you so much to all of you for tuning in and, and having a chat to me um and yeah i'll get back to you in the comments as well so thanks guys Oops. And I don't I don't know how to turn it off. There it is. Okay. This time. Bye.